Uh, can you tell us a bit about each of your characters, please? Yeah. So, I play Kira, and um, she is, you meet her with Han in the very beginning. They've grown up together. Um, and they've grown up in the, in a kind of scrum rat environment of Corellia. You get a little bit of that. They, they are separated for whatever reason. And then later on in Han's life, she's reintroduced in a very different guise. And the guise that she's reintroduced is alongside one Dryden boss, who's a badass mother. Who is a total, yeah, I'm a, a, a sociopath who enjoys hurting people, uh, has a really good time doing that. Uh, he's a gangster. He is a sort of uh, he's, he's a sort of godfather figure. If you're going to do a spot of business, put a crew together, and you know, do a spot of business, a heist, or whatever, you have to pay him uh, uh, um, tribute. And uh, if you don't, things are going to go wrong for you really quickly. Yeah. And tell us what drew you to that kind of character. Uh, well, that's my Sunday. So, uh, <laughs> um, what drew me to that sort of character? Uh, you, you know, look. I, it was Star Wars. I f saw an opportunity, which was my old mate, Ron Howard, had taken over the, a Star Wars movie, and so I begged him to be in it. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And what drew you to the character of Kira? Well, yeah, I mean, it's similar. I'm sure you get this with Star Wars movies, where you kind of ask actors, like, why is it that you wanted to be in this movie? And you go, as the actor, you're like, who says no to Star Wars? Someone says, would you like to be a part of this? And especially with Han Solo, especially with this beloved character. It kind of, I saw it, I definitely saw an opportunity for us to be making something really new and different within the realms of something that is already loved and known. So there's kind of a lot to go for there. There's a lot existing in that space for us to inhabit. And then this is your first time being in Star Wars films. So uh, Star Wars films comes practical sets and big fun practical yeah. sets. Did you have any experiences? that you wanted to share? Well, wow. my first day was magical. I, 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 I remember the first time I was on a movie set, where it was a, 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 a TV set for a show called Wycliffe. <laughs> and um, I remember it being so magical and thinking, I've got to remember this day and, and remember the feeling that it's given me. And, and I never had that feeling again until I was on the Star Wars set and I walked down a s this sort of spiral staircase in, in a, a, you know, a starship that was my starship. <laughs> and there was an R2 unit going by with champagne flutes on his head and it was unbelievable. It was a wonderful, I felt, felt like I was six years old again. And did yeah. you have a practical set experience? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's the sets, yes, and they're huge and amazing and have everything in it that is Star Wars, but then it's when you meet a creature for the first time and you can't see the 19 puppeteers or you can't see the dude next to you who's, like, controlling the amazing animatronics. Because when we first, when we were doing rehearsals, we kind of went and did, like, visits of the, of the different, um, like, the creature compound, for example, where you get to see how they make their faces. And the insane craftsmanship and that is what I think is so beautiful about Star Wars now is that they have a huge amount of um, money to be able to make incredible movies they do and so they're bringing back these these incredible this craft this absolute animatronic craft and so you have a creature compound where you've got all of these people working on su with such fine detail on something that is making movies that make fans all over the world incredibly happy. And so when you get to see that process and then be a part of that process, it's just fun. We get paid to have fun. It's sort of silly, really. That's cool. Um, everyone talks about, Ron Howard was talking to me about uh, the 12-year-old kid inside, mm. that you have to tap into your 12-year-old kid when you're working on a Star Wars film. What would your 12-year-old kid say about you guys being in a Star Wars film now? But I'm just, duh. <laughs> You know, I, it's just a stun. Like it, 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 you don't, you don't, you don't think my twelve-year-old kid would never have even dreamed that this would be the life that I'd be living right now. That's for sure. No, me neither. Perfect. And then, uh, what do you expect audiences to take away from the film after they've experienced it? More love for 
a character that they probably already loved. Yeah, I think they'll 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 uh, they'll have more understanding and insight into how Han learnt that it's better to shoot first and second. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that part last night. It was amazing. I have two questions for the in-home uh, generics. Uh, one of them is working with Chewbacca. How was it working with Chewbacca on set? It's just brilliant. It's just like you get to hug him, everybody and you get to him. everybody hugs him. It was, it was an incredibly huggable set. You know, sometimes, you know, puppy therapy, you gotta come hold a puppy, makes you feel better. Holding a Chewie makes you feel better. Being held by a Chewie. Being held in a Chewie's arms makes you feel better about everything. And just, you know, a Chewie close up is a special thing. Wookie love, Wookie, Wookie love. Wookie love, right? love. one love. love. Um, and then uh, there's a, a bonus feature, Escape from Curlia. Yes. Uh, that's going to be. Can you talk to us about Corellia and the sets and filming there, in the scenes? Yeah, Corellia. I felt very much, and I know that Alden and I are the same in this because both of our favorite, one of our favorite movies is Hook. True story. Um, so when you've got the Lost Boys and you've got the Rufy O part in there, and you have all of the like, so a much dirty down, true grit gangster version of that, in that you've got all of these kids. And you've got it in this, living in these, in that literally underground. So it's it's just like a kid's imagination gone wild in these kind of crazy tunnels and this dark, dingy, dank environment. And you just, you know, it, it, there's no adults. It, it's kind of, yeah, it was very imaginative and playful and fun and crazy. 